Hi, welcome back. We're in segment three of lecture one on experimental research. This last, last segment is very short, and it's based on the feedback we got last year in the discussion forums, is not everybody fully understood what I meant when I said random selection from a population and random assignment to conditions in an experiment. So I want to talk a little bit more about this concept of random. So as mentioned in the first two segments of lecture one, experimental research critically depends upon random selection and random assignment. So what do we mean by those? So random selection means that individuals included in a sample should be randomly selected from the population. So in the polio vaccine trials, what that means is we, sh we should be randomly selecting children from the entire United States if all children in the United States is the population that we want to make our inferences about. Um, in the working memory training example, if, we're, if we want to make inferences about all young, healthy adults, then we should get a random sample from all young, healthy adults. Of course, that didn't happen in the one experiment I showed you. Um, that's the idea, is we have a population, and if we want to make an inference about that population, if we want to generalize to that population, then we need to get a random sample from that population. That's random selection. Once we get that random selection, then we want to do random assignment to conditions. The way I want to illustrate this is through this color wheel. Okay, so imagine we have this color wheel and I can spin this color wheel, so make my pen work. We can spin it uh, like on a game show. I can spin it and it can, it can randomly come up on any color. So I, I can't predict which color it's going to come up. It, if it's truly random and we spin this wheel over and over and over again and we just count out how many times I get yellow, how many times I get green, how many times I get blue, then we should have what's called a uniform distribution. In other words, it should look like this. This would be a random distribution of spins. So what's plotted here is on the x-axis, we have the different colors that were in the color wheel, and on the y-axis is frequency. And this is a histogram, which you're going to cover in the first lab um, later this week. And what happens is you don't get them to be perfectly equal, but what you see is they're all about the same height. So on average, you would get, uh, it would fall on the yellow pie, piece of the pie, just as often as it would fall on the red piece of the pie, if it were truly random. What would a non-random sample look like? Well, it might look something like this. Say the wheel was biased so that it was sort of heavier on the yellow and green portion of it, so that it would fall there more often than not. Then we might get lots and lots of, it, of cases where it falls on the green slice of the pie or on the yellow slice of the pie. And very, very rarely might it fall on the red or the purple slices. Now, if you were, uh, you know, running a, a sort of an illegal <laughs> gambling shop, this is how you would set it up, right? So you would put the sort of high value uh, prizes on red and purple and put the low value prizes on green and yellow and then you would always win as the house, and that's actually how a lot of gambling houses work, um, is they're, they're not random. They're, they're sort of non-random to favor uh, the house, uh, the owners of the gambling facility. Uh, so don't gamble. That's the worst thing a statistician can do. Uh, so this is what a non-random distribution would look like. So that was random selection from the population, Experiments also depend on random assignment to conditions. So we want there to be a 50-50 chance, for example, that a child 
gets either the vaccine or the placebo, or for example, that a subject coming in to do memory training, we want there to be a 50-50 chance that they get assigned to either the true memory training condition or a control condition. So there's random assignment to conditions. And if we successfully assign subjects to conditions, then we should get something that looks like this in, with respect to this color wheel example. So group one and group two, not only should they have this sort of uniform distribution of colors, uh, but they should also look similar. So group one should have a similar distribution to group two. So this is an example of random assignment to two groups uh, or two conditions in an experiment. So to recap, experimental research requires and critically depends on this idea of randomness. One, random selection from the population so that our sample is, is randomly selective. And two, random assignment to conditions so that we have uh, similar types of samples across the conditions in the experiment.